Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. We're doing something a little bit different today. Usually I will start out in the morning with a warm-up and I'll do maybe a time lapse and show you guys that everybody has just a few minutes a day to do something fun or sew back into yourself in terms of, um, you know, giving back to yourself and improving your skill as an artist. Your skills as an artist! So what we're going to do today, instead of that, is we are going to draw. Woohoo! Got to draw. But I got a new piece of tech. So occasionally on here on this channel, I'll get a new piece of tech and I'll review it. Um, I don't get tech from companies to review per se. I don't get kickbacks or anything like that. So anything that you see on this channel, I have basically purchased with my own money and I just want to show you guys that sometimes um, you know as artists and illustrators uh, you know the tools that we use uh, are varied so much that you know occasionally it takes you know somebody to review it to really kind of understand especially a professional um, you know there's a lot of tech out there these days you guys from iPads to all-in-ones to laptops to tablet devices, there's different operating systems, there's different, uh, there's different types of pin tech out there too. So what I did is I went kind of in a different direction. Um, my original intention was to buy a 3D printer. <laughs> so instead, I bought another all-in-one. And uh, I didn't really need the all-in-one, but I figured since I have to spend money anyway for my business, I'll go ahead and do that. Um, not a very good mindset uh, and direction, but on the other hand, what I did get was something I didn't really expect. Um, I got a Dell. <laughs> I got a Dell, bro. I got a Dell, man. Uh, I got a Dell Inspirion uh, i7. It's the i7-573. They designate their laptops with numbers, so the Inspirion line is kind of their low to mid-range uh, computer. And it's very affordable. Typically, you'll find them at Best Buy, which I believe is their um, their main vendor who they sell stuff through, and uh, possibly Walmart. So these are really low-end budget computers, in my opinion. They don't really compare with something like a Surface or a Surface Pro uh, in terms of quality. But what I really discovered was... Gosh, what an incredible all-in-one at a very low price point. I was able to get my all-in-one... Um, and Spirion for about 560 bucks with tax it's about six hundred dollars and with that um, you know I'm not going to get into the minutia of the settings not the settings of the um, technical aspects of it but just for comparison I just wanted to throw out a couple numbers to you guys it has a, a 512 SSD that's a solid state drive for all you layman's um, and then it has uh, it's got one Two, let me see, it's right here. Um, one. So it's got a USB C port, it's got two USB B or A ports, so I believe the A or B has to do with the power designation. It's got an HDMI port and it's got an SD card slot. So these things uh, are the peripheral applic or the peripheral slots on the machine. It also came with a 4K screen and it's a 15.6 inch screen. And this is the reason why I got it. Um, not only does it have the 8th generation i7 core processor, so it's got 8 processors in it. Um, it came with this pin. This is the active pin that Dell uh, sells, and it's not Intrig. And, and that's one of the things that I really didn't want. I didn't want another Intrig computer, because Intrig, in my opinion, is kind of flawed when it comes to drawing. Whenever it comes to handwriting, Intrig's great. But whatever you're drawing, there's a wiggle, whatever you draw diagonally, that has to do probably with the digitizer. And the Intrig technology just has not developed over the past five years. It's been the same. So that's really an embarrassment for Microsoft. But Dell uses Wacom uh, technology, but they it's a it's a different type of Wacom technology. It's not the, uh, the battery-less uh, stylus. There is a battery in here, but it's I'm not sure if it's Bluetooth or not. I don't think it is. Because whenever I go in and I see if it's connected to the Bluetooth connectivity on the machine, it's not. So for some, it's just a weird technology. I think it's over a thousand levels. It might even be four thousand. I'm not really sure. Um, 
And one of the caveats to this whole scenario concerning the pin is there's a lot of variables inside the Dell world. Dell is a fragmented company, in my opinion, and they don't have a really good, um, I don't want to say support system, but it, 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 it's not very good whenever it comes to specific computers. Like, one machine will support one pin, one machine will not. One machine will be able to have the control panel access for the pin, and another machine will not. And I'm sure that has to do with the price points and the quality and everything else concerning Dell, but it'd be nice if they would just equalize everything and have everything kind of nice and tidy. Um, you know, like Wacom or, uh, or even HP. So... We're going to get into this machine a little bit, and I'm going to do a really quick sketch in Sketchbook Pro to kind of let you guys see. Uh, it is very fast, and and not just, you know, oh, that's that's just a nice little fast computer, uh, very nice, you know, it does your Photoshop and, and stuff like that. No, it is a blazingly fast computer. It's got 16 gigs of RAM, and you can upgrade it to 32 gigs. So I got 16 gigs of RAM. I got a 2 gig dedicated GPU, a 4K screen, 8th uh, generation i7 processor, um, and all of that, all of that, and a warranty, two-year warranty for 600 bucks. And I can draw on it, and it came with a pen. So I look at all this, and I think to myself, what in the heck are all these other companies doing when you got companies like this? Of course, the fit and finish isn't fantastic. Granted, it's not wonderful. But uh, it does the job uh, just the same. So let's get into the fit and finish and the quality of it really quick. And I'll show you guys. I'll power it up. And then I'll start doing a drawing for you guys. Okay? Okay, so here is the machine. Let's turn it around for you guys. It is quite large. <laughs> As you see, 15.6 inch uh, laptop computer. And they, they market this as an all-in-one. And... It's, it's more of a laptop than anything, so it's got cooling fans on the front and rear and the back and on the bottom because it does have some robust uh, technology on the inside. So let's go ahead and open up the face here. Wow, it's just, it's got a lot of real estate. So it, it's in terms of battery life, uh, they market it as over, I believe, uh, 8 to 10 hours. So let's power it on really quick. Let's have this come down. Okay, so of course it has Windows Hello. It's got, I believe, a 1080p camera here and a 720. It doesn't have a camera on the back, which I was kind of disappointed about in comparison to, say, my Surface. But it is a lower price point machine, and I accept that. That's fine. So, um, <clears throat> the machine itself, the, the fit and finish and the quality, I would say, is about a 6 out of a 10. It's got a lovely aluminum shell on the outside, and then whenever you get to the inside, you get to this kind of chintzy plastic, which I wasn't really happy with. Um, but on the whole, the build quality is much better than I expected for a $600 laptop. And, you know, just the fact that it's got this beautiful 15.6 inch screen really makes up for the fact that it's lacking uh, in the area of build quality. Um, you know, it's real snappy. It doesn't hang up at all. So let's go ahead and go into Sketchbook Pro. We'll launch this program. Now, normally what I would do <clears throat> is I would, um, I'll show you guys exactly one of the really cool features that it has, but I just wanted to get in here really quick and just show you, you know, the program launches really quickly. The keyboard is fantastic. I'll be honest with you guys. I'm, a, I'm an illustrator and artist. I, I primarily use the keyboard for typing emails obviously, any word processing. But one of the great things about this machine is since it is an all-in-one, it folds. So instead of having to fart around with the keyboard, I don't really deal with that. So I've got um, the XP pin uh, quick key remote, which I installed the driver and it's got a little dongle on the side. So now I've quick programmed my quick keys to the program um, that I've launched, so it automatically senses what program it's on whenever I launch it, uh, which is really cool. So, we're going to get into a little drawing here, really quick. I've got to plug it in, so let me do that, and we'll get started. Okay, so what I'm going to do for you guys is just do a really quick drawing here in Sketchbook Pro. This is a, uh, a program that used to be free, <laughs> and I say used to be free because... 
In 2020, um, I just went on the Alias uh, website recently, and for Sketchbook, there is a subscription model, and it's $85 a year. So um, I might be wrong about that because there's <clears throat> there's different versions of this particular program, which I didn't realize existed. So I'm not going to sit here and say that it's free because what's inadvertently going to happen is some person's going to be, oh, it's free, and they're going to look for it, and they're going to be like, oh, you're wrong, you moron. So I don't think it's really good for me to say that it's free whenever I've looked and I see that it's not. So Sketchbook is free whenever you download it from the Microsoft Store, but Sketchbook Pro 2020, I believe, is a subscription model. So that being said, this is a perfectly fine program for what I use it for, which is just simple sketching. And um, so yeah, so why did I want to show you this computer? Basically, I wanted to show you this computer a couple reasons. Um, number one, as you see, it is, there is flaws, okay? Just like any PC, just like any Windows machine, the hand palm rejection situation is ridiculous. You know, I go back and I even did it again. See, it keeps doing it. See, literally, if my, if my pin is too far, if it's right there, like if I come in like this and I hit it and it, it'll literally, it'll make spots all the time. So what you have to invert, what do you have to do whenever you're using the Windows uh, touch system, is to remember there is a distance between the pin sensor and the computer itself that you have to kind of you know remember and follow uh, if you don't want to have a bunch of marks on your machine because what I'll do typically is whenever I draw I'll come in and I'll have my hand like this and I'll come in and then I'll, I'll rotate my hand down see it activated it but what you have to do in this situation if you don't want a bunch of marks is you have to go in pin first and then put your hand down um, it does have uh, buttons. The pin does have two pro. They're not programmable because it does again in this particular model. It doesn't have. Uh, yeah, see, it, it keeps it keeps messing me up here. So I keep my hand down. Keep the hand down, son. Um, this machine, of course, I I, I originally was going to title it the the cheapest best all in one because. Whenever I looked at this machine, um, and I kept, you know, I always do lots of research before I buy any machine, and my original intention was to buy a Surface Pro, uh, I'm sorry, a Surface Book 2, and I, I started looking at it, and I'm like, I just don't want to pay a grand for it. And then I thought, well, maybe I can just go ahead and buy the upper part for like $600, because I already have a Surface Book, and... If I did that, then I could just go ahead and uh, use the, uh, you know, the keyboard because I already basically have a keyboard. I would have a dedicated GPU, but I was okay with that. Um, and then I started, you know, I looked at, you know, what are the best, most powerful all-in-ones out there. Now, for those of you who don't know what an all-in-one is, basically it's that verbiage now used for computers that are kind of in between tablets and. Um, and full-out laptops, right? They're the machines that kind of make up now the bulk of what consumers buy. Professionals will go towards the laptop, your, uh, your, your easy user, children, people that don't really want to get into computers per se will go towards the tablet side, and then you have somebody like me who's a professional that doesn't really like laptops and doesn't really like tablets. You need something to kind of fill in that gap. And that's what they've done with all-in-ones. Um, I saw recently that they're marketing, uh, you know, they're putting phone, uh, they're putting phone processors inside of computers now. And I'm like, I don't know about that. And it has to do with power because again, you put a really powerful processor inside of these machines, and you're going to have an issue with heat. And you're going to have an issue with um, battery life, and that's really what has been happening. I mean, if you look at the battery uh, technology that's been developing over the past couple of years, it ha really hasn't gone that far. Uh, and I say that because, you know, I look at my computer back when I had one in 2005, 2006 when it, with the lithium-ion battery, you know, whenever I had my Mac, my, my MacBook, and, you know, I was getting five, six hours, seven hours out of it. Now they're marketing as, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 hours but that's only on the internet you put photoshop on there and you start drawing with it then it's gonna it's gonna really go down you know to maybe two hours and that's pretty much what happens is you start doing any type of artwork on it and it just destroys the battery 
uh, you know, capability and life. Um, that's why you should always carry your power plug with you. <clears throat> so what I'm basically doing is I'm fleshing in the really simple character drawing and showing you guys that in terms of, and I'm going to go over to Photoshop here in a minute, just to also show you that, you know, this machine is, is wonderful whenever it comes to Photoshop. I'm just doing a really quick initial sketch. And I want to show you one of the things that this computer does really well is just the fluidity of, you know, the drawing process. It's just absolutely wonderful. There is, like I said, no lag. Now this computer, and this is pretty normal on any computer, even does it on my Mac. And I have a really powerful Mac that I use as my main machine. It's an iMac 27. It's got like 4.5 gigahertz, 32 gigs of RAM, and 27 HD 5K screen. So it's a very powerful machine. And what makes it really powerful is the operating system. Um, Windows is kind of the hang up whenever it comes to the power of these machines because Windows is very fat. Um, you know, it does a lot of things in the background that really steal your. Uh, you know, steal your processing capability, it updates in the background, it does, you know, things that you don't necessarily want it to do, so you have to go, you have to become a computer professional to learn exactly what it's doing. Um, but that being said, uh, with this new processor, because I have I have a computer with a seventh generation i7 and it's got 32 gigs of RAM and the and the processor oops, see, I made a boo-boo. So you got to go pin in first. The processor that it has, it's a quad core. It's not a quad core. It's a dual core processor. So it's got four processors instead of just one. So each processor is 2.8 gigahertz. Whereas this machine has eight processors at 1.8 gigahertz. And it's got 16 gigs of DDR4 and I believe 24 uh, megahertz. So it's got faster RAM and it's got more processors. And it's got a dedicated GPU. Um, and that's really what makes this computer so powerful as a, as a, as a sketching machine. That's the deal too. I'm not, I haven't done any, uh, video rendering on this yet. Um, and I will, I'll put, you know, I've got Premiere Pro on here and Premiere Rush. I'll run it through its paces. Uh, I'm teaching a class next semester on video production. So that'll be, um, something that I'll use this machine for. Um, so as you see, it handles this particular program, no problem. And one of the things that I think you need to realize too, <clears throat> whenever you deal, you know, with all-in-ones, is it's not a desktop. So what does what does that mean? The these machines have you know thermal throttling on them, which I believe the desktops do as well. But the cooling fans on a desktop far outdo the cooling fans in this little you know all-in-one. You can't really compare the performance of your desktop with a machine like this. But that being said, I mean, this is a pretty powerful machine. I own the ZBook um, as well, and that's what I was talking about before with the machine that has the i7, you know, with the other processors. Here, we're going to make this brush a little bit bigger. See, the fan came on, because again, I'm using the GPU to zoom in and out. But it's nothing, you know, obscene. Just going in and doing a little sketch do of this little critter. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you guys on time lapse. Yeah, see, there's there's a false positive right there. See that palm rejection is just so irritating. I think I can go in and I can turn touch off. Let me see if I can turn touch off in Autodesk Sketchbook Pro. Let's do preferences, brush, change color, system. Canvas, no, we'll enable scroll bars, brush, general, 50 undos, enable rotate canvas, which is good, factory defaults, lagoon, I don't want to mess with the lagoon, okay, so we're fine, um, now on my Z book, I can turn off touch, there's a button right here, and I just turn touch off, so I don't really have any issues with touch, and again, that's what I was talking about with certain machines. There are certain things you have to kind of look at and say, oh, I wish I could do this. I wish I could do that. Now, there's probably a setting I can go in and turn touch off. But just for this particular little demo that I'm giving you guys, I'm leaving touch on because most of you guys will probably leave touch on. And you're just going to have to deal with that little thing that happens. I wish that it was different. I wish that, you know, iPad has wonderful... Um, 
touch sensitivity but iPads are very expensive and they don't run pro level apps that's one of the things you have to realize is you're not running pro level apps whenever you deal in the iPad world now they just introduced Photoshop but again it's so stripped down and I was talking to one of my students last night because she actually was using it and I said well what do you think and she said it's ridiculous because you know you don't have a lot of the same features and I said it'll just take time just like Procreate took time so I just switched brushes um, one of the things about this particular program that's really cool is whenever you download it um, and I, I don't think you have to log in anymore um, but what it does is you can actually download brushes which is really cool from their website for free. Now I, as you can see, I've purchased some brushes and I have some brushes downloaded already, but this is a very robust program and you can save as PSD files. Um, and if you can, you know, if you can find the earlier version for free, it makes it a really powerful, uh, powerful program for you to use. So, as you see, it just glides. Now, I don't particularly like the smooth surface on here, just because, you know, it, it's very slick. And if you see, you look, it's got such a nice, and I'm drawing diagonally, and it's completely straight. See, that's the Wacom technology. If this was Intrig, man, that thing would be all over the place. And the pressure sensitivity is good. It's not amazing like a Wacom, uh, you know, like a Wacom tablet, but the technology is there and the pressure sensitivity. You got to understand, I didn't pay, you know, I looked at the Mobile Studio Pro, the current iteration was like three grand, and I got the same processor, I got the same amount of RAM, I got basically almost the same type of technology could it because it is Wacom technology, and it, it literally, it's like a, it's like a Wacom Mobile Studio Pro, but I didn't pay three thousand dollars for it. Uh, you know, I paid six hundred bucks. For those of you who aren't looking to get into the Wacom universe and start paying billions of dollars, this is a fantastic alternative for you guys to get in here and start doing some digital illustration. I taught a uh, we had a huge symposium at the school that I teach at, and there are over three hundred educators from the state that came and art educators and one of the classes that I taught was about digital illustration um, you know hindsight being 2020 I probably should have done more demos because I think a lot of them wanted to learn how to do digital illustration here's the problem a lot of them had never been on a computer before and drawn anything and we didn't really have the uh, you know the time they gave me a two-hour block which you know again I could have really just gone in and said alright everybody let's log in let's you know do this this and this let's get your let's let's at least the very least get you guys a feel for what digital illustration is but what I did instead was go in and mess around uh, with exactly how to apply it to your classroom what digital illustration is as an art form so I kinda did a little bit more talking and in the end I did a um, you know I did a real simple demo which again I kinda regret uh, I should have you know really gone in and, and allowed them to experiment a little bit more but you know what hindsight's always 2020 we look at things and we're like you know what I should have done something like that but of course I didn't so what I'm gonna do for you guys really quick um, well I was gonna go on time-lapse but honestly I don't really want to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and draw a little bit more and maybe I'll put you guys uh, on time lapse because what I've noticed is a lot of people like the live kind of, you know, step by step drawing process. And this particular machine, you know, doesn't, gosh, it doesn't have any, it doesn't really have any lag. And that's the thing that I always tell people whenever they go to buy machines. I say, what machine, what interface, what operating system is going to be the best for you because you're the one that's going to be living with it. And if you're not really a tech guy or girl, if you basically have a very limited knowledge of how computers work, then the Macintosh is probably the way you need to go because it really is just a plug-and-play-and-go situation. You don't have to get into all the 
details about drivers and understanding how to change things um, you know in that PC world and, and honestly it's very aggravating sometimes you know like my HP had some issues with the um, with the screen drivers and you know I had to basically after I updated my graphics driver I had to go in and I had to uninstall it and then I had to reinstall it and that was aggravating and I was thinking to myself who in their right mind would have the knowledge to do all that if you had not grown up with computers if you were a layman that doesn't really understand how that language works and yeah it, it would be very aggravating you know so as you see this computer really doesn't have any issue with inking it's got a fantastic line um, I can make adjustments on the brush of course inside of this program but what I wanted to iterate to you guys was the fact that this is a 15.6 inch 4k screen and it is just wonderful to look at I mean wonderful in addition to that it's got that really robust processor in it um, that you know I, I'm not getting paid by Dell to do this honestly I was very I was I almost didn't buy this computer because I'm like dude I don't want a Dell you know I'm a Mac guy you know, I've owned Macs and, and I've owned Surface Pros and I'm not sure the fit and finish and the quality is going to be up to the task and, and as a professional machine. But lo and behold, so far, you know, I've had it now for uh, about a week and a half. Here's the funny thing, though. I, uh, whenever I first got it, it took me a day, a day to update everything. Are you, are you taking that in? a day because of course you know whenever they put these machines in the box they put them with a certain level of updates and operate on the operating system and of course if they sit on the shelf for any length of time then whenever you get the machine you have to plug it in you have to charge it and then you have to update everything and let me tell you something there were so many updates and the way that windows um oops, see i got some false positives and the way that windows works if, if you guys don't understand, if you're coming from the Mac world, um, they're constantly updating drivers, they're constantly updating security, they're constantly updating operating system uh, parameters and just little things here and there. And then, like Dell, you know, they have a shell inside. And instead of it just being straight Windows 10, it's Windows 10 with a Dell shell. Because there are certain peripherals that Dell offers that you know aren't on other on other machines, and they want to have control over certain aspects um, of their user experience. So that basically is what has happened here: is you know Dell goes in and they put their spin on stuff, whereas HP goes in and they put their spin on stuff. So I'll get updates not only from Microsoft, but I'll get updates from. Dell as well and that's not the best thing in the world to happen but I'm okay with it because I'm used to it now whenever I first got it I'm like come on man because in a Mac world you get updates you know very sparingly of course unless there's a security risk so okay so he looks pretty fun right so now what I'll do is I'll go back over to my Watch my color brush. I'll double click. Now I've got this to where it tapers because I like the sketch quality of it. So size with light pressure. So what I'll do is I'll bring that up just a little bit. So now to be more or less a like a paintbrush, I'll make sure I'm on the right layer. Okay, go down here to the sketch layer. I'll add a layer here. Okay, so now I'll just start blocking in some value just for giggles. Right? And, and the smoothness, it's just so smooth. I mean, just wonderful. There's no hang-ups. Occasionally I get a false positive, but I'm okay with that. Just as long as it doesn't get too out of hand, right? I still haven't run ZBrush on, on this computer. I probably will, just to see how it flies. ZBrush on my HB ZBook is wonderful. I actually have ZBrush on my Surface Book as well. And that doesn't even have a dedicated GPU, and it does pretty good. That's because ZBrush is a program renderer, not a um, graphics card renderer. It, it, depending on the complexity and how many, um, you know, points and vertices you have in the, uh, you know, on the model, will uh, really 
slow your machine down based upon the RAM. So it takes your RAM. Uh, so you, you should really have a decent amount of RAM whenever you use those 3D uh, programs. But in terms of rendering and stuff like that, you shouldn't have any issues uh, with ZBrush. At least I don't. You know, I've run ZBrush on a Surface Pro 3, and that's, you know, six, seven, eight years old. So, give him a little, a few little spots here and there. I'm not even sure if I'm recording. Oh, I am. A few little spots here and there. Oh, got some false positives up there. You got to watch those things because <laughs> you'll get to drawing. And then you're like, man, I love... Oh, crap. Oh, crap. I got a huge dot right over there. And two, I keep hitting... I can't program these... I can't download a control panel for the... um for the pen to adjust the pressure and I can't you know do the whatchamacallit's the um the buttons either it doesn't have an eraser which really sucks that was kind of a it wasn't really a deal breaker because you know I can program on my quick here remote I can do an eraser really quick um so I wasn't really upset about that and what else? What else about this machine? I'm trying to focus on the machine and draw at the same time, people. Come on. Give me a break. Um, let me see. Okay, so now I'm going to come over here to the left-hand side in the column. And I'm going to come up. And I'm going to scroll down to the skin. Here's the skin texture brushes. I love these. And what's really cool is you drag over here. Drag over here. Right there. And that one, I like that one a lot too. And you can customize your palette over here on the left hand side, which is really nice. So I'm going to use that brush. I'm going to create a new layer over here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead in. I'm going to adjust my brush size. I'm just going to see where we're at. There we go. So I'll just start brushing in some textures here and there, right? So you guys can see. Nice. got a really nice quality to it. I really like the way Sketchbook Pro works on the PC. I have Sketchbook Pro on all my devices, but in the PC world, it tends to work a little bit better. Um, I guess it may have to do with the interface, it may have to do with the brush engine. I'm not really sure, but I really like the way that it, it, it puts down the, uh, you know, the markings in the digital world. Just wonderful. Love it. Okay, this is a really quick way to do characters. If you guys are looking to get into digital art, digital games, stuff like that, characters are a really good way to go. Just because it shows the potential uh, employer your your train of thought, how you think, you know what um, direction you're going to go. There's shape language involved. You know there's uh, there, I'll we'll go to this one right here. Scattered freckles. That looks good. So we'll do some freckles on him right here. <laughs> just fun, right? And this is just literally, you know, sitting down with with the Dell, brah, and messing around, you know. Putting a little pixels, pushing pixels this morning. We're not pushing traditional uh, artwork today. Right? Something fun. So, what I'm going to do for you guys, really quick like, just because I want to get some value in it. I don't want this, uh, this video being six hours long. So, I'm going to go ahead and put some value in, or I'm sorry, guys, some hue in the back. And then once I get some color in, I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you some tips and tricks uh, involved in throwing in some um, layer, uh, layer transparency effects. So, enjoy the time lapse and putting the color in.
Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, since I'm working in layers, what I can do is I can lock the transparency um, on this boy. So I'll hit this little lock right here. It locks the transparency. So basically, if I were to like take a color, and if I were to draw completely across it, okay, so let's go ahead and back, completely across it, see how it stops? So it's only going to affect me drawing on this layer is only going to affect what's inside of the blue, which, by the way, is extremely helpful whenever I'm doing any kind of shadow work or any kind of, um, you know, color dodge or anything like that, um, like if I was in Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down, the color hue, a little bit. I'm going to go back in and I'm going to start putting a little bit of shadowing in. You see? Just a little bit here and there. And I don't really I don't have to worry about what's happening outside because I've got that layer transparency locked. And you know, for the longest time I didn't really use that feature. What I would do because I was working in the, the apparel world. And basically I would select that layer, I would create a new layer, and I would do all of my effects on top. And that was really cool because then whenever the separators went in they didn't have to worry about having a lock transparency and they open that layer and it causes issues with their separation software and they have to flatten everything and it just becomes a super massive headache so I got kind of in the habit of doing that so whenever I would do my files and you would have all these you know 200 layers that's the reason why yeah I keep accidentally hitting that button so let's go ahead and make the opacity a little bit more saturated and if you look I've got my sketch on one layer and all I'm doing is just and, and this is it's not even on a transparency you know if I were to go down to multiply it would get rid of the white and just show the darks so I keep that on normal and I've got my color my local color on the bottom and all I'm doing is going in and I'm just darkening some of the areas and I've got that transparency lock on there right so if I want to make my darker my colors a little bit darker or, you know, intermixing the colors a little bit. Maybe I want to make the fins back here a little bit purple. You know, you can go in and put a lot of value in very quickly and have a nice dynamic digital illustration with very little effort. Right? So now I, I, want, to, I want to get some gray here. So I'll come over here. I'll go to a mid-tone gray. And I'll just go right over top of these really quickly. Oops really quickly um, okay so now that I've got kind of what I want to as far as the color goes now obviously don't get me wrong I can go in and I can really render the crap out of this but for time's sake and the fact that this is kind of a product review I didn't want to go in and do that um, so now I go here and I go to the different uh, layer transparencies it's got glow soft glow color dodge so if I went to color dodge basically I'm going to use a color it's like using a light that's colored so let's say I want to have a nice green or a purple or a blue hue to go and run t right on top of this blue hue so I'm going to come here let's do um, let's do kind of a green color okay right so if you watch now I don't have my layer transparency lock on here and I don't have this layer selected so if I decide to do this what's going to happen it's going to go off and it's going to go right on top of um, you know my background but what's nice about this is now I can go in and use that color it's like if it was a colored light which is really cool and right here And again, we're just having fun this morning. We're not doing anything major. We're just doing a little digital art, baby. Right? A character piece like this. I did a character a demo last night in class. I don't think anybody paid attention to it. Because <laughs> it was a photography class. And... You know, I did a really quick demo. Actually, I did demos not only for photography, but then I, you know, while everybody's working, I did a little uh, digital painting um, demo for them uh, in class, which was a lot of fun. 
I'll give him a little bit of green in his eyes. I really green's my favorite color, so that's probably why you see a lot of green in my art. I like green, I'm sorry. It, it's I like it. It's good. Some rim lighting here and there to give him a little bit of form. Maybe a little highlight up here. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Okay. Just a fun little character, right? Something easy, something fun, simple shape, put give him a little horn action. Right? And then you can go back, right? Since I still have color dodge on, and I can go in, I can give him some texture, right? That's what's really cool about this particular um, program and digital art in general is now I'm getting into the like the little areas, the minutia um, of the shading and you know give him some texture. You guys saw that I used a um, a crosshatch brush and that's one of the brushes that is provided in Sketchbook Pro for free or at least you know before they started charging $85 a year. What is this, Russia? Come on. You say it's free, you advertise it's free, and I go to your stinking website, and then you're like, $85, please. Thank you very much. Okay. So that's pretty much all I'm going to do today. I'm going to go ahead and give him a little bit of a background. Okay. Good. Let's do blue. Let's do orange. So we'll do compliments. Complementary color, opposite of blue, of course, is orange. As I spit on my screen, that's disgusting. You're disgusting. Oh, you're so disgusting. Again, this is a pretty decent sized brush. Not really getting any lag at all. Just a simple background. You know, we're going to saturate a little bit more. We're going to go down here. Okay. Kind of pop, a little pop. Then I want to give it a texture, right? A little texture. It is, of course, November. November! Thanksgiving's coming up. Brush properties, we're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna click that again. Here's my brush library. I'm gonna come down, I've got a ton of textures and brushes and really cool painting brushes. Well, that's, a, that's a good one. I like that one right there. Let's see what that looks like. Some of these I don't even know what I have, to be honest with you. Ooh, I like that a lot. It kind of blends it a little bit. Whoa! That's nice. Gives it a little bit of texture, which kind of coincides with this character design. He is a little rough around the edges. His name is Hector, by the way. Hector. See? There's a false positive. See what I mean? It happens! Okay. What stinks about these brushes though, even though it does give you a preview, sometimes it's hard to see. Oh, I like that one. I like that one. That's a problem. Ooh, gritty blocker. There's nice. So let's go a little bit darker here. Yeah. Let's go a little bit bigger. Nah. Let's go down here. We're almost done. Stick with me. Stick with me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like that. That's good. Look at that. Look at all that texture. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of creepy, dude. Kind of creepy. You need, you need to stop that business. So then I come here, and I go to Glow. I jut up a little bit, and then I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh man, so just a couple little splatter dues. That's that's the sound the art makes, by the way. Okay, you guys, that's pretty much all I'm gonna do for today. Again, this is the Dell and Spirion 7573. 16 gigs of RAM, 512 SSD, 4K screen, mini peripherals, it's got a 2 gigabyte NVIDIA dedicated GPU, 600 bucks, 600 bucks you guys could get into the digital world on a full platform PC that is extremely robust, 15.6 inch screen, 4K, I can't express my, 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 uh, 
my happiness for this computer. I can't wait to do some incredible art for you guys. But thank you guys for visiting, and we'll see you soon. Bye.